Hello, dear students. I am Samir Velankar, and I am. I welcome all of you to this video in which we will be learning a few gate questions asked on NP completeness. Basically, the questions are asked on P, NP, NP hard, NP completeness. Let's see gate 2006 question. <music> The question says that let S be a NP complete problem. So S is NPC, NP complete problem. Naturally, if S is NP complete, then S is both NP, NP and NP hard. You know this property. Other statement they have made is and Q and R are be two other problems not known to be in NP. So Q and R are the two problems which are definitely not NP. Q and R are not NP problems. Now make it clear that they have said that Q and R are not NP. This is the statement they have made. They are not claiming anything other than this. So definitely Q and R do not belong to the set of NP class problems. Let Q, next statement they have said is, Q is polynomial time reducible to S. So how do you represent this? Q is polynomial time reducible to S. Correct? And S is polynomial time reducible. Keep reading the question. S is polynomial time reducible to R. So how do you represent this? S is polynomial time reducible to R. And then they are saying which of the following statements is true. So only one of these statements is true. Now let's, before we read these uh, options, let's see what, these, what, what this re reduction means. They have made it clear that S is NP complete, isn't it? S is NP complete. This problem S on the left hand side is NP complete and it is reducible to R. Now tell me if S is NP complete, definitely it is NP hard. You know this property. This S is NP complete. So it is both NP and NP hard. So let's let's check it is NP hard, isn't it? And if any NP hard problem is reducible to some other problem like R, then definitely R is NP hard. Our first conclusion. Yes, just check this again. S is NP hard. It is given in the question clearly because it is NP complete. As S is NP complete, it is NP hard. So S is reducible to R means R is definitely NP hard. Recall our theorem where we claimed this. But then one might wonder that left hand side S is NP complete and it is reducible to R, then why is R not NP complete? Why don't we say straight away that R is NP complete? Well, we can't say this because they have clearly said Q and R are not NP, not known to be in NP, isn't it? When will be R NP complete? R will be NP complete if it is NP hard and NP. Only then R will be NP complete. So by this reduction S reduces to R, we can only say that R is NP hard. We can't say R is NP complete. Okay, I hope you have got this claim. So R is NP hard, B option seems to be okay. And R is NP complete doesn't seem to be okay. Because I repeat, R will be in NP complete only if R is NP hard and in NP, but it is clearly given R is not NP. But by the reduction S reduces to R, we know that R is NP hard. Let's, let's see the third option. Although we have got our answer, B is the answer. But then let's see option C. Q is NP complete. Now you watch the first reduction. I'll just erase the slate. First reduction they are saying in, in the question is Q is polynomial time reducible to S. So Q can be reduced to S in polynomial time. Correct? And 
nothing has been told about q that what kind of problem is q it is only said that it is not np okay so not np means it can be in p it can be in np hard it it can be anywhere but we we don't have any claim about this the problem called q it's only given that it is not known to be in np now if some arbitrary problem is reduced to s where s is np complete it's given our theorem says that nothing is concluded from this nothing is concluded if s was reducible to q if a hard problem that is np complete problem was reducible to q in polynomial time then q can be np hard and if q is also np then if it is also np then it will be np complete i hope you are understanding so option q is no way to, you cannot no way to be np complete you just can't convert some arbitrary problem like q in np complete problem and say that the left hand side problem is np complete the theorem is just the opposite isn't it which i am marking over here same is the claim with q is np hard you can't say anything about q problem if q is translated or reducible to some np complete problem you can't claim that q is np hard before i close the discussion of this question just check the reducibility rule again if a is reducible to b in polynomial time and suppose a is np hard then b is surely np hard first rule second rule is if a is reducible to b in polynomial time and if b is a polynomial time problem it is p class problem then a is definitely p class a can be p class so just remember these two rules and from these two rules we got that r is np hard i hope you have understood this let's attack the next question gate 2009 question the question says let pa actually this pa was pi in the gate question they just named it as pi i have named it as pa let pa be a problem that belongs to class np so the first argument given is pa is a problem which belongs to np class so what do you mean by this there is a polynomial time reduction algorithm polynomial time sorry i'm so sorry there is a polynomial time verification algorithm for this problem pa that means if some solution is given you can verify whether that solution is really correct for the problem pa in polynomial time isn't it then which of the which one of the following is true there is no polynomial time algorithm for pa you you might see feel that this is correct because it belongs to np class isn't it and the problems which belong to np class do not have any polynomial time algorithm you can't solve this pa in polynomial time so you may feel that option a is correct but this is the trickiness of the gate questions you know our venn diagram which we had drawn i will concentrate only on np and p problems okay np and p problems now what they are they are telling you telling us is that pa pa belongs to np class isn't it now imagine that some problem pa not the position where i am showing the pa uh, problem i have shown pa inside the set p okay surprised because they have said that pa belongs to np class come on p is a subset of np according to us now if pa belongs to polynomial class problems it's it belongs to np class problems also isn't it definitely i mean i, I mean if 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 this is india and th this is let's say uh, let's say maharashtra and this is where samir is then samir is a member of maharashtra and samir is a member of india also basically if the problem is told to be in np np class then that problem can be in polynomial class also i i am not saying that pa cannot be over here it can be purely np it can be but that there is a possibility that this pa problem can be in the polynomial class also 
if it is in polynomial class it will be still in np class isn't it that means every polynomial class problem belongs to np class problem because it is a subset of np so how can you claim point a i hope you are understanding that there is no polynomial time algorithm for pa what if pa is inside this polynomial class then there exists a polynomial time algorithm for pa so option a is invalid option b is if pa can be solved deterministically in polynomial time then p will be equal to np now what they are saying is is that if pa can be solved remember pa is a np problem let let me switch on the marker remember pa pa is a np problem and they are saying if this problem can be solved deterministically in polynomial time if we get the algorithm which solves the problem in polynomial time then p will be equal to np we claim the same point again over here imagine that pa the problem that we are talking about is inside the polynomial class if pa is inside the polynomial class it is still np isn't it because p, p problems are subset of np and now how can we say that if we find polynomial time algorithm for pa which is already a polynomial time all the np problems will merge in p silly isn't it this claim is very silly you can't say that if some problem like pa is solved deterministically in polynomial time then all the np problems will be merged into p and p will become equal to np this claim is senseless the third argument that they are making is that if if pa is np hard then it is np complete oh that's it you see that pa is already given to be in np and they are saying suppose we prove that pa is np hard then both of, both these points have been proved that pa is in np and pa is in np hard then surely pa will be np complete option c is obviously correct the last option pa may be undecidable no you can't say anything about this pa might be undecidable means undecidable problems are such problems for which algorithms absolutely do not exist not even the algorithms which work in order of two raised to n exponential algorithms also don't exist like there is a famous problem called halting problem i am not describing the problem here but it was a problem suggested very very in a, in late 40s by alan turing and he proved that halting problem is undecidable if there is a problem which is undecidable you cannot write algorithm for that problem you cannot program that problem not even in this huge time exponential time so this is this is obviously not true because for np hard or np complete or np problems we can design algorithms which are taking exponential time so option c is correct i hope you agree with my claim thank you very much